Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. I'll be reading from the NIV translation of the Bible. And it reads, when Joshua had grown old, the Lord said to him, you are now very old and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. Father, <laughs> truly you are a way maker. Truly you truly live in us who trust in your son Jesus Christ. And we know that Holy Spirit dwells in the believers. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in me and through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, who is my strength, who is my redeemer. Have your way in me and through me. For it's in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. There have been many times Jay and I have gone on long vacations and have stayed in the state-of-the-art hotels. When we go there, we rave about how beautiful the rooms are, and the restaurants that are in the hotels, the room service. But when we leave the hotel of a certain country or city and come back home to our house, the first thing we say is, I love going on vacation, but there's nothing like home. Being in your own bed, being in your own envir environment. The same even applies when you go to visit family out of a town. We had the same feeling. We love being with family and enjoying being away from home. But there's, some, but there's nothing like being back to your home, sweet home. We can travel the world, but there's nothing better than being back in your home, sweet home. The world and the earth. Mm. The way it is today, wicked, evil, is nothing like our original world in home before the fall of humanity. When Adam and Eve sinned, the journey from the Garden of Eden began from a home that was perfect to one that would be amazing, but not like the one they left behind. Hmm. Adam and his wife Eve were in the perfect home in which we are the offsprings of the first husband and wife. All of humanity comes from Adam and Eve. Not King Kong, but Adam and Eve. And the perfect home awaits humanity's return. The world we live in today is not our home. Let me say that to you again. The world we live in now is not our home. See, Jay and I enjoy traveling and enjoying all the beautiful things the land we live in offers, but there is nothing better than our own home, sweet home. So the title of this afternoon's message is Home, sweet home. Many times we have heard people say that hell is here on earth. It would even be safe to say that many don't believe that there is a literal hell. We can assume, we can assume these people think that the earth is the extent of what hell is. But my brothers and sisters, hell is not here on earth. Hell is a place where those who don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ will spend eternity. Hell 
will be their new home. Hell is a spiritual prison. A home for the wicked. Prisons in our society today is the home for criminals, amen? A place for the wicked. But there is a literal hell, just like there is a literal prison in our society today. Some of us in here have spent some time in those places. We know that prison has no freedom. Prison got you on lockdown. And you say, well, help. Seems like to be on earth because we seem like we're on lockdown. Seems like we don't have really no freedom. But I'm here to tell you, and don't miss this. Hell is a literal place that the wicked will spend eternity. Our souls don't die. This flesh decays and die. But our soul lives forever. It's either going to spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. Now, someone may say, well, if we can get high, if we can have fun in hell, maybe hell is not such a bad place. Don't be fooled, my brothers and sisters. You do not want to go to hell. It's like a fire and brimstone message, but hear me out. There's some good news in this message today. And the good news is heaven is here on earth. This is the promised land. This is Canaan. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. Going into Canaan was just the beginning of what was promised to those who are children of the most Hi, God. After seven years of battle, Israel gained control of the land which was divided and allotted to the 12 tribes of Israel. Joshua dismisses the army and now it is their responsibility of the 12 tribes to clear out the remaining enemies from their land. There were still enemies in the land God promised them. And he said, now go remove them from the land. The army is finished. Go into the areas in which has been allotted to you and clear it out with the enemies. Clear it out with those who are against our God. So there was work still to be done. Joshua continues to encourage the people to remain faithful, to remain faithful to God so that they can remain in the land. Not like Adam and Eve who disobeyed God and was forced to leave the perfect home, the Garden of Eden. Are y'all with me so far? The promised land was Israel's earthly inheritance in which we can share. However, it is a land in which we can enjoy. This is our home away from home. Let me say it again. This is our home away from home. Three things we need to see this afternoon and we're done. Canaan, number one. Number two, heaven. And number three, the new Jerusalem. See, let me make something perfectly clear to you. When we leave this earth, we will not grow wings. We will not fly around in the sky. That's not what heaven is. And Holy Spirit is going to tell those who do not know what heaven really is, he's going to show you what heaven really is. But we begin with Canaan. 
Write this down. Canaan is heaven on earth. Canaan is our home away from home. Let me hear you say, Canaan is heaven on earth. <clears throat> Turn to Numbers chapter 13, verse 27. They gave Moses this account. He went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Acock there. The promised land is also called Canaan. And it's funny how Christians can be in church for many, many years and don't understand nothing about So the promised land, also called the land of Canaan, was indeed magnificent. As the spies had discovered, the Bible often calls it the land flowing with milk and honey. Although the land was relatively small, 150 miles long and 60 miles wide, its lush hillsides were covered with figs, dates, and trees filled with nuts. In time, this land would expand over the entire earth. It would grow. We're in Canaan now. Some of you might be saying, well, this is a little too deep and profound for me. Just hold up. Because I'm going to share what Holy Spirit shared with me. That's going to break it down for you. So is anybody confused thus far? <laughs> then we can move on. The land, it was the land God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Israel, that was promised to them. They're fighting over that land right now. We're not going to get into that. But they're fighting over that land right now. And if you think about it, the whole world is fighting over land. They want it. They want it all for themselves. And this land was promised to Israel. The land was God's promise to Abraham and his descendants. Well, if he's an Israelite, where do, where do we fit in? Well, I'll tell you. Those who received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior are descendants of Abraham as well. Uh, you didn't know that, did you? Some may say, well, I'm a descendant of what's the guy's name and roots? Kuta Kente. And he don't look like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't know that. Some may say, I'm a descendant of Pocahontas. No. You're really a descendant of Adam and Eve. I can't wait. It begins as a small place. However, God said it was a large place. This is the entire earth. Isn't the earth a beautiful planet? Isn't it beautiful? I see you, you guys when y'all go out of the country and y'all posting. I say, wow, look at Greece. That's such a beautiful country. Look at Thailand. Look at Africa. I see all your posts. And you're sitting, you're all in the mountains and you're taking pictures of the forest and, and the waterfalls and all of that. And I'm, I'm living vicariously through you. I say, oh man, I wish I could go there. In the book of Exodus, we see the Lord coming to Moses to tell him that he has come to rescue his people and bring them into a good and a good and spacious land. He says, I'm going to bring you somewhere good. 
And you don't have to turn there, but it's found in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 through 8, where he told Moses, I'm going to get you out of this trouble you're in. I'm going to deliver you from Egypt out of this slavery, and I'm going to take you into a beautiful land. God was bringing his people into a good and spacious land. The word good in this particular verse is the Hebrew word tobi or to be. It means beautiful, best, better, bountiful, cheerful, most pleasant, pleasure, prosperity, sweet, well, well kept, favored. God was telling Moses that he was about to bring his people into all these wonderful blessings from, from slavery to prosperity. Ah, uh, some of y'all like this kind of stuff. He said, Pastor, don't usually preach on prosperity, but this is a good message from Holy Spirit. He says, I have delivered you from the slavery that you were in of unrighteousness to a spacious land, a promised land to you. This is your land. This is your land. This land is our land. This land is your land. This land is our land. From California, from California to the New South Island. This land was made for you and me. You said, Pastor, you didn't sing that, right? You know what I'm talking about. We as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are heirs to this great promise, this great blessing that God has left us. Woo! God was telling Moses that he was about to bring his people out of these, out of, into all these wonderful blessings from slavery to prosperity. God promised Abraham's descendant as many as the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the beach. Too numerous for anyone to count. He said, this is your land. We have been engrafted into the family tree stated in Romans Chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. You can write these verses down, but I want to get to the meat. This is foundational stuff I'm telling you, because many of God's people don't know this. If you said, who are you a descendant of? You know, on my tombstone, just to, just to break down a little something to you. On my tombstone, if I die of a heart attack, well, let me back it up. On my death certificate, I wish that they can write the real reason I died. If I die of a heart attack, that's not the real reason I died. If I die of cancer, that's not the real reason I died. On my death certificate, it should read, the reason of death, the cause of death is Adam's sin. That's what I should have on my tombstone. Reason for death, Adam's sin. So it's important that we understand the foundation, the fundamentals of the word of God. And we're not preaching that today. My Bible says my people perish because of a lack of wisdom. But I'm going to get to the meat to this. Because the meat is in Canaan. The meat is in Canaan. And only those who believe, only those who receive the Lord Jesus Christ, because he said in his word, as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become sons and daughters of God. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You got to be able to know that you're saved so that you can enter into the new house, the new home. Does not the Lord's prayer say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Don't the Lord's prayer say that? The Lord wants us to begin living a good life now. Good marriages, good jobs, good children, fine homes, fine cars. God wants us to have what is good for us now. Philippians 4.19 says it, and my God, will, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ. We can trust that God will always meet our needs. He will meet all 
our needs. In the promised land, the land that has been promised to all of us, our home away from home, there is enough for everyone. It is a spacious land. The word spacious means large. It is the Hebrew word raka. It means roomy in every direction. As far as east is to west, broad, large, very wide. And in studying this message, Holy Spirit be bringing to my attention lots of things. As far as east is to west. And when Holy Spirit showed me that, he, he gave me a song. And the song goes like this. And we're moving on up. To the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're well, moving on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. You know where heaven is faced? East. Ah, uh, a deluxe apartment in the sky. They were talking about heaven then. They were like, we in heaven now. Weezy, we in heaven now. This earth is a deluxe home. And we're never going to be in the sky. Heaven. Heaven is where God reigns. Heaven is our dream house. We have not seen it yet. But we imagine what it will look like. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 19, it is recorded that after Jesus had spoken to his disciples, he was received into heaven. In the book of Luke 24, verse 51 through 51 says, Christ led them to a place called Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. After Christ blessed his disciples, he ascended to heaven. Well, he sounds like he went to the sky to me. The most detailed account of the Lord's ascension is found in the book of Acts, where he went from one place to another. He left earth to go to heaven. Sounds like heaven's in the sky to me. Heaven is therefore a place. Where it is located, nobody knows. This afternoon, Holy Spirit wants us to see heaven as a place and a state of mind. Heaven is our dream house. Heaven for us now is more of a mindset, a state of mind. The believers in Christ Jesus are said to be delivered from the power of sin and raised with Christ in the heavenly realm. Mm, 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 mm. So you say, but I don't understand. How can I be in the heavenly realm? I'm here on earth. It's a mindset. What does it mean? Even though we are in this world, we are in heaven now through a state of mind. We are raised above this world system and its philosophies. For example, I'm going to break that down to you too. A person can have a home in the ghetto. Does not mean inside the home has to look like the ghetto. We are set apart from the world we once lived in. Our way of thinking before we were saved no longer is our state of mind. The world system is like the ghetto. Just because your home is in the ghetto don't mean you have to act ghetto. It's a state of mind, a mindset. Just because we live in the world, we don't have to act worldly. Can I preach to you? Oh, we getting ready to get some meat now. What's very important to understand, the earth is heaven in the world. The earth, Canaan, is our home away from home in the ghetto. It's not the Garden of Eden. We're in the ghetto right now. We're in a spiritual ghetto. It's not our home. Where we left, where humanity left is much, much better than this. Oh, I wish I'd get some amens in here now. See, the word world, the word world, Holy Spirit is using in the context of our message this afternoon is the word cosmos, K-O-S-M-O-S, -O -S -O -S, which is a system 
not the world as a people, but a system. We are to live above this system. It is a system of darkness. Usually when people live in the ghetto, they exhibit a certain behavior. This is where we get our phrase, don't be acting ghetto on me. They could be living in a mansion. They could be living in the suburbs. But the way they act, the first thing people want to say, why you acting ghetto? It's a system. And that is why when you proclaim to be a Christian and you act a certain way, what do people say? You are acting worldly. It's a system. Essentially, they're saying you're acting spiritually ghetto. You're acting just like the world. We live above this worldly system. We must be sitting in the heavenly realm, which obviously is a state of mind. We're here. We're in the ghetto, but we don't have to act ghetto. We're in the world, but we don't have to act like the world. See, remember my wife. She worked at this news, um, a black newspaper called the Miami Times. She would come to work. You know how Elder J dressed. She always dressed like that, even in high school. She would walk in that office, do her work, very smart girl, making, uh, checking the mistakes of the paper we find in every one of them. She do spell check. Even Elder Tanja asked her to do a spell check for one of her books. And one day they worked late. And she said, I'll see you guys later. They said, oh, it's dark. Because the Miami Times was in the ghetto. Uh, it was on 15th Avenue before it moved. And they said, we're not going to let you walk home or catch the bus. We'll take you home. So they loaded her up in the car. And as they were driving, I can assume the conversation was about work. But as she was directing them, make a right here, make a left here, and we're home. Because it wasn't far from her job, her house, her apartment she lived in. And when they saw where she lived, it was in the deepest part of the hood. There was a place called The Hole where they sold reefer, famous reefer called The Elephant. Because I would visit her. <laughs> and they said, oh, you live here? Perception. Although she lived in the ghetto, she didn't act ghetto. And just because we're in the world, we don't need to act worldly. Can I preach to you? Some of you feel a little uncomfortable. I can see it. I can see it in your body language. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Although we live in the world, we don't have the mindset of the world, but we have the mind of Christ. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. My brothers and sisters, that is where we are also. Christ is here on earth in the presence of Holy Spirit. Christ, when he was here on earth, on Canaan, in Canaan, he lived in the hood. Read your Bibles, Nazareth. When Andrew heard Jesus was from Nazareth, he said, can anything good come from the hood? Jesus did. And just because we're in the world, some good can come out of us. We are the light of the world. Heaven is a place and also a state of mind. Jesus ascended to a place in heaven. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and where I am, there you will be also. But it ain't in the sky. That place will be the new heaven and earth. The new heaven and earth will be called the new Jerusalem. 
Turn to Revelations 21.1. Revelations 21.1. Hmm. Are you learning something today? Then I saw a new heaven. Here it is. John getting a revelation from God. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. <laughs> Prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eye. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. The new earth and new world is now in view. In the new earth, we will have a new body. We will be dressed with spiritual bodies, glorified bodies, not wings. You won't have Nikes on with, with, with wings on your feet and, and you go up in the air and you, you fly away. This is, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. We're not flying. We'll get caught up. We won't have wings. We'll get caught up with God in heaven in the clouds. You'll see that sometimes when they talked about heaven, they talked about the sky. And we'll get caught up in the heaven in the sky with Jesus. And we will come back here and reign with Jesus. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. The bodies will be newly created and filled with all those who are heirs of Abraham. These bodies will be suited for those mansions Christ spoke about when he said, In my father's house there are many mansions. These bodies make way for the commencement of this new world, new home. No more of the old world, the home in the ghetto. The world with all its troubles and commotions will be done away with. The earth as we know it will no longer exist. After God's judgment, God will create a new earth, home, sweet home. This is our dream home. A home like humanity's first parents' home. A perfect home and with new bodies, the bodies of the first humans, Adam and Eve. We will walk through doors. We will run and not get tired. I walk up steps now. I'm 66, I think. I am, right? I walk upstairs now, and when I get up there, see, I used to walk upstairs like this. And when I got in my 40s, I, 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 when I got in my 50s, Now in these 60s, and when my wife go down the stairs, I always tell her, hold on to them bandages, girl. Be careful walking down those steps, because see, I fell down the steps. Why y'all laughing? That ain't funny. <laughs> yeah, big old bruise on my booty, because I was old, and I went a little too fast thinking I was 40, and I was reminded, you're 66. But when we have these new bodies, we won't cry no more. We won't feel pain no more. We won't need a plane to go to Chicago. We won't need a jet to go to Greece. We won't need anything, any foreign uh, worldly transportation. We'll run there. Because the home, the earth, is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. 
Turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I, I want to show you this in Scripture. Uh -huh. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. See, I was going to preach this in two parts, but I was so anxious to get to this part. Romans 8, verse 18. Paul speaking here, he said, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. Right there. From its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Sin has caused all creation to fall from the perfect state in which God created us. People don't want to talk about Adam and Eve no more. People don't want to talk about heaven no more. Well, I ain't got married yet. I've been a virgin all my life. And I've been faithful. And I want to have sex when I get married. That baby said, me too. You're too young to be thinking like that. But Holy Spirit told us in Bible Thumpers today that it's funny how we feel bad for people that's starving in Africa. And we go to restaurants. We don't even take doggy bags no more. If we leave half a chop, half a steak, rice, beans, Salad, bread. The waitress come and say, do you want a doggy bag? No, I'm good. Throw it away. And maybe a child will say, mommy, daddy, you should get a doggy bag because people, people in Africa are starving. But I think as Holy Spirit was talking to us today, he said, those people can find contentment even though they're starving. And we pray for them, but they could be praying for us saying, they live in such a wicked world. People kill people in, in the United States. They don't do that here. We may not have the food that they have, but we live in. We can walk all night long in the dark and nobody kill us. Just have to be careful of the lions and the bears and the elephants. But other than that, we're good. Don't worry about the people in Africa. We, 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 we thank God that they're praying for us because this world is so wicked and so evil and so dangerous. But there's going to come a time when there ain't going to be no more. Uh -huh. We're going to have the new heaven and the new earth. But we don't want to preach about that no more, Elder J. We just want to preach about that good stuff. Yeah, you're going to have a husband. You're going to have a wife. Uh, yeah, God's going to give you a mansion. Yeah. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Our sister Jamie told you about something that you can help you, but that ain't the best. That's not the best. A lot of you got some nice homes. I've seen your home, but I'm here to tell you, that is not the best. A lot of people are living in, they say, this is heaven on earth. No, it's not. It's ghetto. I don't care how nice your house looks. For those who visit the first time, I hope you come back. I say, man, your pastor be talking ghetto. Last week we were talking nigga, nigga, nigga. Y'all remember that, don't you? For those who didn't come last week, you missed that message. How we just throw that word around. But God told us to pursue peace and love. If you want to see that message, look, look at it on YouTube. It's called Ball of Confusion. I don't know if they cut the words out. I looked at most of it today. He said, hey, it's all of us there. I heard a song today, and the song was titled, By War. It was called, The World is a Ghetto. Anybody ever heard that song, By War? The world is a ghetto. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. 
that was a nice song. And I was listening to it, and I said, man, those guys were in the 60s and 70s too. And they were talking about this world being a ghetto. Holy Spirit brought that to my attention. Sin has jacked us up. Sin has caused all creation to fall from a perfect state in which God created. The world is subject to frustration and decay of the body so that it cannot fulfill its intended purpose to never decay, to sustain forever, never to die. We weren't supposed to die. Oh, Jay. I somehow wish I could just, oh, because we don't understand how precious it is that Jesus died on the cross so that we can have eternal life. You will know your loved ones. That's the thing about my wife. I, I, my wife loved me. I'm going to tell you all this. Because when we talked about heaven one day in the church that I was in, uh, the, uh, the covering I was under, pastor was talking about when we get to heaven, same thing I'm talking about. She raised her hand. Yeah, I'm talking about you. She raised her hand. And he said, Jennifer, what do you want? But you don't never raise your hand. She said, I just want to know. Am I going to know my husband when we get to heaven? And I was just thinking, she probably say, because if I don't, I don't want to go to heaven. <laughs> no, nah, she wouldn't have said that. She would have said, brother, see ya. <laughs> we, will, we will know each other. We will know Adam. You will know your significant other. So get married quickly. Because in heaven, when we get to the new Jerusalem, guess what it said? There will be no more marrying. And see, the Holy Spirit so human. See, see, some of y'all so picky. You, you, your husband right in front of your face. Like you say, uh-uh. I want him. And then when he get to heaven, y'all both going to be single. Because <laughs> there ain't going to be no marrying. <laughs> the new Jerusalem is our new hope the new Jerusalem is our future we look forward to the new heaven and earth that God has promised we await God's new order that we will be free from the world of sin, sickness and evil the world is a ghetto the world is a ghetto in the meantime we must go with Christ into the world into this world system to be used by God to heal people's bodies, their souls, and fight the evil effects of sin in this world. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. <laughs> by the same word, the present heavens and the earth are reserved for fire. Y'all hear that? See people on preachers. By the same word, the present heavens, the pre this heaven right here that we're living on, and earth, this system, are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the, uh, with the ungodly. That's serious stuff. The day of the Lord is quickly approaching. We don't preach that no more. It's quickly approaching. You can see the evil that's in this world. And my question to you, are you saved? Our dream house is almost ready for us to move in. Are you ready? There are those who are in here today building houses. God is building a house for us. Are you born again Christian? Do you truly believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for all your sins? Are you ready to move into the home you've been imagining since the day you were saved? Do you yearn for your dream home? In conclusion, only children of the Most High God can come into the New Jerusalem. Salvation is what we should be preaching. People getting ready to go to hell for eternity. Because I go to people that claim they are saved. They're in church. And I say, if I wasn't saved, what would you tell me I need to do to be saved? Uh, you, you need to come to my church. It's on 95th and 22nd Avenue. My pastor will tell you how to be saved. Because they don't know. 
Or they'll tell you something like, well, you need to stop getting high. You need to stop drinking that beer. You need to stop going to, to, to the strip clubs. You need to stop riding that pole. I know the money good, but God didn't make you like that. And you're going to hell. You'd be surprised the people that are going to go to heaven and those who are going to go to hell. Because there's a lot of people that have a form of righteousness, but they're going straight to hell. And the very one you're talking about, that have some struggles, ought to be the very ones that God says, enter my good and faithful servant. Even though you got in by the hair of your skinny chin chin. Because it's not about what you do, but it's about your faith in Jesus. For it's by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you want to experience true joy, true happiness, true wealth, prosperity, heaven on earth, this afternoon you really need to know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation. Jesus is the way to heaven. Jesus said to himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by me. To get to the Father who is in heaven where he reigns, one must trust Jesus to lead him or her there. Because Jesus knows the way. Christ knows where and how to get us there. We must follow him. Christ knows the way to our home. Sweet home. You say, Pastor, well, we didn't go over a lot of scripture. Huh. Sometimes we don't have to go through scripture. You just need to listen to what Holy Spirit is saying. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to go to a, a spiritual prison, hell. Can you imagine living eternity in hell? And you talk about so this if hell can't be worse than this. Hell, we hell is on earth. Uh-uh. I'm telling you, get serious. See, let me tell you, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, change takes place. You desire to want to be in church. You desire to pray. Not just sometime, but all the time. You know how you can pray all the time? Pray over your food in the morning. Pray over your food in the afternoon. Pray over your food in the evening. There's three prayers right there. That's a continuous prayer. And then when you go to bed at night, pray again. That's four, four, four times a prayer right there. Not including the ones that you prayed in between. And as my brother Julio said, a lot of people don't pray and praise God until they get in trouble. Then they want to pray and praise God. Pray and praise God now. Because we are in a spacious land now. This is beautiful what we have. Enjoy it. Because we are, heaven is on earth. And his will will be done as it is in heaven. My brothers and sisters, don't take this message lightly. Preach the gospel. Tell people about Jesus. Some people will leave here and say, oh, that was all right. The message was all right. It was all right. That wasn't for me. I'm here to tell you that message is for you. The devil's not going to be in hell. He's going to be destroyed. You will be living in limbo. The gnashing of teeth. Frustration. Continual frustration. Agony. And separated from your loved ones who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't take this lightly. Don't go around saying, uh, 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 Jesus died for all my sins and keep sinning. No, forsake those sins.
Repent. Get serious and know that a transformation has taken place in your life. I know a transformation took place in my life. I hated the gospel. I didn't want it played in my, in my car. I made guns. I didn't have a problem using it if I had to. I would kill somebody. But God changed my life. You walk around, well, Pastor, you seem so nice. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. You can ask my wife. She's seen it all. She know what God has done in my life. Because we serve a mighty God. And he has taken me from the slavery of unrighteousness to the slavery of righteousness and brought me into this land to enjoy. And I'm going to enjoy it until I get back to my home. Sweet home. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in us and through us. There may be someone that needs to ask you to come into their life. There may be someone here that needs to pray the prayer of salvation to receive eternal life so that they can reside in the new Jerusalem, the new earth. If that's you, if you know that you still got to make a change, there's still a lot of changing that has not taken place in your life. And you're a little, you're a little confused and not sure you're saved. You can pray this prayer with me, but pray it with all your heart. Pray it sincerely this time. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe your son Jesus Christ died on the cross. For all my sins. And I receive him. Right now. At this very moment. As my personal savior. Come into my life. Change me. So that I can make you my Lord. As well as my savior. Come into my life right now, Jesus. I believe that if you come into my life by faith, I will change and I will be more like you, Jesus, in my walk, in my talk, in my everyday life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and giving me eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord Jesus Christ came into your heart and saved you. And now you have eternal life. It's that serious. We have loved ones at home, man. We need to tell them how serious this is. You need to tell them what you heard today. You can ask them the question, where is heaven? Ask them. Ask them, where, where is heaven? Ask the question. Do you know where heaven is? You'll be surprised what you're going to hear. I'm telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shock you, the answers you get. Because they don't know. But you can tell them heaven is here on earth. That opens up dialogue. Tell them about the new Jerusalem. Tell them about the new earth. Tell them that this is going to be destroyed and renewed. <sighs> Tell them about the glorified body. <sighs> I love you guys, man. But we got to get busy. We got to get for real, man. And many of you heard Sister Jamie talk about that credit score. And, and getting so you can buy a house. You, you, you should have seen your eyes. Licking your chops. Talking about the new heaven. That's how the world is. 
Father, dismiss us, Lord. We love you. Have mercy upon our souls. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm all by myself in this fight, but they do not know the infinite size of the God who is by my side. Hey, on the fire, but my Goliath's standing in the shadow of the Almighty. I ain't lying, just testifying. Man, I'm talking about a